Hello to my subscribers. Today we'll be looking at a funny issue. Uh, my friend, he had a 2012 Mustang 3.7 liter and he was saying that when he pulled out of his driveway one morning, he didn't have quite the power that he was suspecting his car should have. He has 305 horsepower and uh, when he went to go start it and drive it out of his driveway, he had kind of a loss of power. <laughs> kind of like it didn't want to run just right, you know, missing 50 ponies or so. So when I got there, I was thinking, hmm, maybe your fuel pump's going out. So I took my fuel gauge, I took my voltmeter, and without even checking the fuel rail to see what the fuel pressure was like, it's much easier to take your voltmeter and put one on the positive, one on the negative, turn your multimeter to volts DC and see what am I getting, right? And I saw when I first got there, his battery was at 12 volts, which is almost a dead battery. You want your battery to be 12.6 volts. Well, anyway, I saw the alternator was charging at 14.2 volts, which is normal. You want your alternator to be charging 13.5 to 14.5 volts. And he was at 14.2, which was perfectly within the range. So I said, hmm, let me hook up my scanner and see what's up. And sure enough, I found six codes. What? Six codes? Yeah, six codes. Uh, all of them related to a misfire. And some of them in particular saying, that's him right there. The cylinder number five, misfire, injector, fuel injector, circuit open. Go check that guy out. So I did, and this is what we found. Because my friend was complaining about a engine like a s type of uh, power loss to the engine that the car was shaking you couldn't really feel it you couldn't see it too much but if you sat in the seat you could feel the vibrations from the engine being off balance and over time this can cause problems with the engine mounts as the engine is kind of just you know off balance like a tire that has too much weight on on one side of the tire so uh, what I did was connect the diagnostic computer to the OBD2, which is underneath the dash. You look next to the hood latch, it's right up here, and this is where you would connect it. And if you have a diagnostic computer, you can find out what the OBD2 system is telling you is wrong with the car. So with this problem, it, it turned out to be a cylinder five misfire. So there was six different codes, but they all said the same thing. Cylinder five misfire, uh, injector, circuit open, and a misfire, general misfire for the first thousand revolutions of the engine. So basically since it said injector circuit open, I had the clue, well, it's a cylinder number five fuel injector circuit, right? And part of the cylinder five in fuel injector circuit is going to be the fuel injector itself which is underneath here and as my friend noticed the insulation over cylinder number five is all torn up and one of the reasons that this might be is that possibly a rodent or a cat came under here most likely a rodent and chewed the wiring which if you live out in the country you probably heard about this happening before and initially I thought it was a fuel injector itself, so I was looking up the pricing, which is 200 to $300 uh, for the set, which if you replace a fuel injector, you wanna replace all of them if you can. You don't wanna just replace one of them because it's like spark plugs. One's gone out, the other ones are probably gone out, but not mostly that being the issue. The big issue is that if one fuel injector has gotten clogged, the other ones are probably clogged too, but this one was a wiring issue, not a fuel injector being clogged issue. Since it said cylinder five circuit open, we knew it was a wiring issue. So looking under here, I was about to test cylinder number five. So if you back off over here, you'll see, I believe that this is four, five, and six. I'm not sure how Ford um, numbers their cylinders, but here on the driver's side, this ended up being number five so my guess is that it's probably one two three four five six or one two three four five six however but this wiring this how do you say this brown wire right here that we soldered into place it wasn't there i pulled that off of the ignition switch that i replaced off the bmw yesterday and basically it just soldered this in place 
Now, if you're going to solder, you're going to need either a butane, a butane uh, soldering iron or an electric soldering iron. And what you're going to want to do is get the extremely thin soldering wire if you can. So you can take some wiring off an ignition switch like this or just get the proper size wiring, which I believe it was a 16 gauge wire, and just get the soldering iron and heat up the wire and then come in with the soldering the soldering wire and just touch the copper. Don't actually touch the tip of the soldering iron itself with the solder and just solder it in place to uh, close the circuit. Another thing you could do is let's say that you have, uh, let's say I haven't soldered that brown wire into place yet, right? You can get like some alligator clips and you can close the circuit and see, hey, maybe that'll fix a problem. I'll put this alligator clip in place uh, over the wire that's been chewed and then I'll get another alligator clip and I'll close the circuit by putting this alligator clip on here and what I can do is tell my friend okay go ahead start the car and that'll connect one end of the broken wire to the other end of the broken wire let's say he starts a car and it's running real smooth right well I'll know that this is gonna fix the problem I close the circuit and uh, remember you need two things for a circuit, right? You need power and you need ground, and they're both equally important. So if you like this video, comment, like, subscribe, and have a great day.